<laughs> All right. Now, let me. I, I I see where you're going with this, caller. Let me ask you a question here. When you when you're looking at that that issue of uh, children and parents, right now, if a person leaves home maybe a little too early, uh, and they they fail, they go out there and they fail. What happens to that person? Do they have any? Is there any kind of uh, in in today's society? Is there any kind of uh, result, any kind of consequence for that failure, or does somebody step in, whether it is the state or somebody else, to take care of that failure? When you look well, at sure. this, uh, and you look at this, it happens at every age level. It's not just eighteen-year-olds who get out there and get hooked on drugs and end up as transients on the streets. It seems like there's always some do-gooder coming along behind to fix somebody else's screw-ups. Uh, this isn't this part of the problem. Is that the the this nanny state mentality that steps in and tries to take care of people when they fail? Well, I, I would say if your kid was six years old and they went out and started running in traffic, if there were no laws, I still think you might react to it. Well, that see, so you say no laws. What you mean to say is no public law, um, no. because there's public law and there's private law. Parents. Um, well, wait a minute. Back, wait a minute. Who said there was pri- private public law? Who said that? Uh, well, a number of. I don't agree with that. Okay, well I that's. Think only, the so so only wait 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 a minute. minute. So if somebody comes, if you invite guests into your house and they start breaking your furniture, or they you're start up, they start eating all your food, right? And your you're making are, up the rules. Now. Um, you're making no, up the rules. I'm yes, not, you are. That's called private law. That's the whole idea well, that you, a king. That's the want, whole idea that a person's house is their domain. That's called private law. Within their prop. It's not no, it's not something I mean. Hans well, Hermann Hoppe writes up. about it extensively, and well, he cites. Why don't they write about it? I, I, I'm an individual. I wait, well, wait, so, so how, wait, how wait, could wait, I have no, written no, about no, it no. if Dave if I, Dave made it I, up? I have a question. So is public law all that exists? Is public law all that exists? The yes. only thing that exists is the the force of somebody else telling you what to do. That's what exists. Right. However, so, they, whatever you so, call it, whatever right, you Right. So the question, it, who, the question is, who has who has the right to use force in a given sphere, and that determines. Whether the law is public or private. Now, wait a second. Who says right? I didn't say anything about right. You invented that, too. I'm talking about an individual versus the powers that tell him what to do. At some point, you're saying an individual has the responsibility for his own ship. And I'm saying that never happens, and you're proving it to me every time you open your mouth. You're proving to me that there are systems at work here that you may call anything you want that are always at work and will always control what you do. And you change it to public and private or, you know, a major majority. You can say anything you want, but it always comes down to one thing. You don't have anything new here. This has been talked about for 2,000 years. Uh, absolutely. Exactly. I, I agree completely. Yes. Bravo. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you for the call. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Charles. Charles, what's on your mind? I'm going to say the most liberal and most liberating thing that I can think of, and it's from Baron Montesquieu, the spirit of the laws. He said, when you endeavor to give benefits out to people, you're going to waste a whole lot of money deciding who gets it, and it should be money going to the people, not to the people that are deciding who gets it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yep. Should have been taken from the people in the first place. Exactly. But how do you stop it once it is taken from the people? I mean, it, it's a matter of giving it back. Don't spend money. Don't spend money trying to decide who gets you money that you're going to give away. Right. Then money that, you could yep. be giving away. See that? Yeah. Right. That goes back to the whole the whole idea of trying to change the government without addressing the pile of stolen money. You just divvy up the, the stolen money. Thanks for the call, Charles. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning. Hey, it's Roger. Roger, thanks for calling. What's on your mind? Well, uh, I was just listening to that guy that was saying there's no such thing as private law. Well, come to my come to my house and try hurting my family, and uh, we'll see who's, whose law presides over you. And um, then you'll maybe you'll believe in private law. Um, somebody asked me why I carry my sidearm, and uh, I tell them it's because the cops too heavy. The cops too um, heavy. Because <laughs> uh, cops cannot protect me. The law has nothing to do with it when it comes down to me and you. On not, and I'm not saying anything against this guy. I'm saying me and anybody who tries to hurt my family or inflict harm upon me, the law is nowhere to be found. And then it comes down to my private law. I will uh, take it upon myself to protect my family, 
protect myself and my property, and uh, and uh, maybe you'll get it about the private law thing because that's my law. Yeah, and, that's uh, yeah, that's exactly. I don't, I don't need anybody to tell me that I can or can't do that. It was born inherent into me that I already knew that when somebody hurts me or tries to tries to inflict harm upon my family, I knew from a small child that I would defend myself. Nobody had to teach that to me. And, uh, I mean, I think that's private law. And as far as you don't have anything new, it's just like the old, uh, I guess it was, uh, it's an old historical figure from Europe where the guy's pushing the rock up the hill and it rolls back down each time. And then he has to start back at the bottom and push the rock up the hill. That's you Greek, actually. That's the uh, Sisyphus yep. in Greek mythology. But that's exactly right. Yeah, you never have anything new. You have to figure this out for yourself. Every generation has to figure it out for themselves. And as long as we do keep figuring it out for ourselves, I think, uh, I mean, that, that's the only way that mankind can exist. I mean, so, I mean... The argument that nothing's new is absolutely correct, but but that's that's not a great argument for for your side because I mean I, I mean I don't know what he's trying to say there. Yeah, I, I don't. I think he's he was just uh, saying you know we're just blabbing old ideas on the radio. But the reason we're having to put them on the radio is because people don't read this for themselves. Yeah, people uh, do not know this stuff. I never knew this stuff until a couple of years ago. Uh, I mean, I, was it you that mentioned Plato's Republic, or was it a previous caller? No, that was the caller that he's talking about. Okay, yeah. well, it, part of the problem is that along with Plato's Republic, there was also Plato's Utopia. And if you look at what's going on today, is that we have those ideas from Plato's Utopia being pushed at us, pushed at us constantly, and nobody's pushing back with, well, wait a second, how about private liberty? I'd like to point out what his main problem with democracy was, and he said that once the people figure out they can vote themselves money from the coffers, then it becomes a competition of who's going to get the most money, and it's unsustainable. Yeah, it's a, it's a childish squabble. That we and see going on right now, even in our borough. Yeah, it's, uh, it's how much of this other person's money can I squeeze out of them for, for the common good? For, and, and right. It, well, and since we're all self-interested, whenever someone talks about the common good, they're inherently talking about their own good. Exactly. Got to get me mine. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate the phone call. All right. All right. Thank you. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Oh, this must be me, George. It might be. Hey, George. Thanks for calling in. What's on your mind? Oh, what's on my mind is uh, when did politicians, when did our government realize or think they realize that every time they go down to Washington, D.C. or Juneau, they're supposed to pass legislation. Every legislation passed infringes on the inherent rights of the people. And the whole reason why we have these representatives is to rein in the power of government, to keep them from, uh, from infringing on our rights. Exactly. They're... And the only thing Congress is supposed to do is defend us and pass a budget, which they haven't done in quite some time. <laughs> the uh, other thing they're supposed to do is to keep regulations and crap out of and off of our backs. Well, you got to ask yourself, where do these regulations come from? Generally speaking, don't most of them come because one of your do-gooder neighbors goes to the government and says, there ought to be a law because my, my neighbor's dog is barking and uh, or he, he wears funny clothes and he's bothering me and there ought to be a law to keep him from bothering me. Isn't that where most of our laws come from? Well, I think most of our laws come from people not having uh, any kind of guts anymore in this country. Because if that person would just go over and say, hey, you know, your dog out there barking all the time is starting to really get on my nerves, you know, 
Yeah, well, well yeah, it's the, right there. The, socializ- yeah. the socialization of problems, right? Instead of dealing with problems um, on the smallest possible scale, which is what the Bible suggests we do, we talk to our neighbors before the sun goes down. Um, instead of doing things that way, we've socialized all of our problems. And so whenever we have a problem, we go to mommy or daddy, right? Because we don't grow up anymore in this country. So we go to the state and say, oh, you know, he was, he stole my toys. Do something about it. Oh, yeah, of course. But uh, go on to that other caller that was sitting there trying to just milk things up and not use common sense. That's another problem in our country. Nobody uses common sense anymore. If they don't get told, oh, I can sue. The thing is, is if you saw a little bit of his history, he'd realize that, oh, back in uh, quite a, not even too long ago, back at the birth of our country, if you were six years old, you were considered pretty much grown. A lot of people started their apprenticeships and everything else at six years old. I'd like to make a comment about what you just said we should sue. We should have a whole show about the fact that the court system is no longer a system of justice, not even close. And if anybody wants to argue that, think about the fact that anytime somebody says, I'll take you to court, it's not. they're not saying, well, we'll let the courts decide this. It's a threat. If you're if you're saying I'll take you to court and it automatically is a threat, there's something seriously wrong with the justice system, because you're not threatening justice in the case, are you? You're threatening power. I'll oh, take yeah. I'll take you to court. I'll ruin your life. I, I'll take you to court because I got more money in you, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, pretty much either which way ruin your life because you spend every dime trying to defend yourself. So wait, wait, wait. What are you saying? Are you suggesting that people should just say, hey, I'll beat your face in instead? I mean, is that, is that basically what you're saying? You, you said earlier no. people had to be a man and step up? No, what I'm saying is if you got a problem with somebody, all it takes is just to be a man and grow up and communicate the issue and work something out between two parties. Yeah, there's something amazing and, when you when you go and talk to somebody you disagree with or have a have a uh, scuffle with. It's amazing how reasonable um, people are when you talk to them face to face. But oh, it's amazing yeah. it's amazing how unreasonable you can make people seem to be in your mind when and, when they're not there. And the whole face to face issue is why our the way our government was originally set up was townships had the most power. Because yeah. you could go and to face to face and talk to your representative that you voted in. They listen. Uh, you guys, I don't like what you're doing. Well, you can't do that. Go ahead and go try to see Lee Murkowski. Or uh, yeah, it's so uh, right. The the appeal, the people you're supposed to appeal to, are so far removed from the community that it's it's uh, pointless. It's and meaningful. reality. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, we need to take our last break here of the hour to mention another sponsor, which is, of course, Far North Tactical over there at the corner of 8th and Lacey, the old Blondie's building. I mentioned earlier this week the uh, testimonial that uh, Aaron received from one of the fellows over there in Afghanistan who actually went online and ordered some stuff, uh, specifically some uh, some bags that he needed, so the, so the packs that they, they carry that he couldn't get where he was at. And, of course, with the, the timing and when he was leaving, he didn't think he was going to be able to get there in time. Uh, this is the way they, they work over there at Far North Tactical. Without any extra charge to this, uh, I believe he's a, a Navy SEAL, without any extra charge to this fellow, they got it there to him on time by spending the extra themselves on the shipping to get it out to him so that he had it before he deployed. And he actually sent some pictures of him using his bag in Afghanistan. Very, uh, very cool stuff. And, of course, uh, effusive thanks as well. Uh, another friend asked me this week, uh, why is it that a, a perfectly law-abiding citizen who doesn't have any background in military or law enforcement, why would they need body armor? And the answer I gave him is, well, you know, why do you need a firearm? Uh, the, the point is is that there are, there are bad guys out there. There are poor decision makers who may try to bust down your door at 3 in the morning. And uh, if you if you think it would be perfectly natural to reach for a gun to defend yourself, then perhaps it would be perfectly natural to give yourself that edge and get yourself a body, uh, well, bulletproof vest at the very least. 